So as a part of pelvic floor is your hips. We noted from the anatomy section that we looked at pelvic floor and we looked at all the names and I don't know if you remember there was a muscle called piriformis and there was a muscle called obturata internus in there. This is obturata internus here, attaches at the bottom of the sit bone, passes through very thinly and attaches to the top of the hip. We've got gemellus superior, attaching from ligament from the coccyx to the top of the leg and gemellus inferior. From a lot of anatomy maps that looks like one muscle. Then we've got quadratus femoris which is the muscle attaches to the side of the pelvis and the leg and then we've got piriformis which sort of tends to give us lots of problems so you can imagine if that leg bends and you're sitting a lot that muscle is going to get very short and very tight so we want to stretch it but legs and shoulders they're held in by muscle so it could be any one of these muscles that is short tight long weak and it's identifying those so those techniques we use of sitting on balls for pelvic floor, but also to release glutes. So if you've ever had an episode of back pain, or if you go to the chiropractor, you might notice, if it's a good chiropractor, he will always mobilise the back of your hips. So it's all those connective muscles to the top of the leg, he said it's very important to keep that whole hip area really lubricated. So a good entry point is a myofascial ball. It's soft, it's made out of that foam roller stuff. If you're feeling that quite painful, work on that until your hips are desensitized. Vibration technology is another really awesome way to help release the glutes. And then there's a ball I've created, I don't know what to call it, butt ball, the high density fascia release ball is kind of where we want to get to. So if you can remember from the anatomy, piriformis is kind of, if you find your hip bone and locate round, it's kind of in the middle of the butt. So I say, come on down onto the floor and just look for an area that's tight. So come onto the side of the glute. If you don't like leaning on your hands, I'll do it up against a couch so that I'm actually leaning on something and not going into my hands. Make sure your bottom leg is bent and relaxed. I'm using my top leg to stabilize me and I'm just trying to let this leg drop towards the floor. So if you find your sit bone, a little roll around, oh, there's my sit bone there, a little roll around the sit bone and roll off the back side of the sit bone and stop and breathe. So you're looking for areas of tension. Again, you're going to hold those for about 30 seconds. I can feel my sciatic nerve. For some people, your sciatic nerve will actually pass through piriformis. For others, it goes on top. For others, it goes underneath. We don't really know. And for some people, the sciatic nerve splits into two and actually passes, half of it passes through the belly of piriformis. So if you're feeling numbness or tingling down the leg when you're sitting on piriformis, maybe you're one of those people. Don't stay there if it's all tingly. Move and come off the sciatic nerve and change positions. For me, I'm actually quite sore, more kind of up glute med, up the side of the hip. But again, if it's very sore, roll around and then find spots that are sore and kind of hang out. We can do it in an upright position or we can come all the way down onto our backs and come in at a different angle where I'm going to lift my hip up and go in sideways to my piriformis that way. Not as strong, different sensation. Try both, see what works best for you. And this is something that should be done regularly. The pain will reduce, it will get easier. Stay on top of it though.